morning, Columbia. I'm Julia. And I'm Marco, and you're watching CPS 360. Our first story is from Marco Ria on a play held by Hickman High School. The Hickman High School Theater Department is back at it again with their latest show, Too Much Light Makes a Baby Go Blind. In this theater performance, the actors take on numerous roles as the whole play is 30 smaller plays put together. It's like a series of plays. They're about a series of different things. Um, I think it's sketch comedy heavy, but you do have a lot of like um, like serious plays or plays that just make you think in yeah. there. So I think it's like a really good balance. But yes, there is one twist. The plays are in different orders every day, all chosen by audience participation. It's like no one knows what's going to happen, including everyone in the show, because the audience yells out whatever the number they want to see, and then that's how they pick the order of the show. The randomness of the show makes rehearsals just a little crazier than usual. The play doesn't go in order. <clears throat> so like each play has a number, but the audience chooses that number. And I think for me, the hardest part is going out there in front of the audience and being able to hold my own while they're, they're just like yelling at me, mm -hmm. you know, and I might even have to not even have the chance to say like, yeah. which number do you guys want? And they're just going to like yell at me. We started out doing it in order just to know like, okay, so you know, we're going to be doing this show next, so get ready, um, and uh, kind of practicing those transitions, but now we're, we've moved into doing it in random order. So the hardest part about rehearsal and about the show is just like kind of being backstage, like, okay, what's gonna happen? That's a lie! That's a damn lie! For CPS 360, this is Marco Rio. Up next is Madison Wright, covering a story about the Run Give 5K. It's amazing what we can do with our feet. We can walk, dance, point our toes, roll our ankles. It's pretty neat if you think about it. This past Saturday, over 40 people decided that they were going to do something meaningful with their toes. They were going to run and therefore give. At the Run Give 5K, brainchild of Casey Buckman, the purpose of the run is to donate money to Woodcrest Chapel's Christmas offering, which is used throughout the year to help people in our community afford therapy, counseling, pay their bills, and other significant expenses. But just because the run was a charity event didn't mean it was easy. I was listening for my pace on my phone, um, but I also knew that there was a really nasty hill coming up at about mile two that was going to wear me down, so I was trying to conserve as much as I could to get there. The hill, I had to walk it, but I still did. And many were excited just to see the finish line. What was your guys' favorite part about today? The end. For some, the 5K really was about the time. Um, I came today because I did it last year. I got like 28 minutes. I wanted to improve in my time, and I got around 23, so I was happy with that. But for many, it was about the greater cause. Well, it's important because of where the money goes. It goes to uh, local uh, missions, uh, assisting people who wouldn't normally be able to do certain things and uh, uh, spreading God's word to them and reaching out to them. Go! This has been Madison Wright for CPS 360. Asia Tilford brings us an update on what is going on in today's politics. This week, I took to the hallway of Rockbridge and Battle High to get the political views of young voters in the upcoming presidential election. Here's what they had to say. I feel that Donald Trump knows what's best because it feels like he thinks that money rules the world, but not really. And it's just that, I mean, some of the things I don't agree with, but it's way better than Hillary Clinton. I heard he racist, and I don't like racist people. So I feel like, <laughs> oh no, I just don't like him. He's a joke, and he needs to go. He's very discriminatory against other races. I think he's very extreme, and he's rude to the other candidates, candidates, which, I don't know, that's just not a good like, quality to have. Um, I'm kind of a fan of Donald Trump, but not to be our president. I think, I mean, I support his story, but I don't really support his morals. Donald Trump, man. <laughs> Next question, please. <laughs> that man's a joke. <laughs> She's stupid. <laughs> She's stupid. I'm not voting for her. She's a fool. I'm not voting for her. Why? Uh, I don't like her at all. <laughs> she makes history. 
she's first woman to be elected? I'm not really a fan. Most people wouldn't see a woman becoming president. So, I mean, but I, to me, I really don't care. If it's Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton, I'm okay with it. <laughs> I like how he stands up for himself around Trump. <laughs> I think that's nice. And I don't really think that like college for all would work. That's really the only thing that I know about him. I mean, he stands up for what he believes in, but I just don't think that he's gonna be a good leader. Um, I feel like his views, like he doesn't care about races more. Let's all be equal, like Martin Luther King Jr. Let's all be equal, it's an equal world. We should have equal opportunities for everything. It should just be a, we shouldn't have to struggle, okay? Not everyone wants to be in debt. Uh, I think he has the most common sense views out of all of the representatives. Um, I think that what he offers to Americans, um, both works in other countries, and is the solution to a lot of the problems that like regular Americans face, like with health care or um, with just not being able to make ends meet. Well, there you have it. I guess we'll see who takes the Oval Office this November. This is Asia Tilford reporting for CPS 360. Our next story comes from Allie Hill on the special event Global Village held by Rockbridge High School. In the commons of Rockbridge High School, students from all different cultural backgrounds join together to put on what they call a Global Village. Countries were included from coast to coast with representation of countries like India, France, Germany, Mexico, and a good old-fashioned barbecue to represent the United States. Hey, get the patty flip. Oh, uh, get the plate. Each booth had its own personality, whether it was giving henna tattoos, serving tasty treats. It's traditional Irish beef stew. Yeah. Would you like to know what it's made out of? Or selling items that related to their country. We catch up with Marco Ria on why he decided to participate in Global Village. Um, it's just something that, like, since it's a minority and there's not a lot of Mexicans at Rockbridge, I think it's cool to, like, have your culture known around the school and show off, like, what your culture is, your food is, and all that. So. Global Village is an event that all students at Rockbridge High School look forward to. This event is unique from any other event held by the school. I think they do. Um, most, not just because of the food, I think, but because they actually like learn something from this and they get to experience like firsthand what um how different everybody is. This has been Allie Hill with CPS 360 signing off. The annual free ACT is right around the corner and I was there to bring the story. Next Tuesday Missouri Juniors will be taking the ACT but this one is different than the normal Saturday morning test. Well, really, um, the entire state of Missouri um, will be giving the test um, to all juniors, and it's um, really to provide juniors with the opportunity to take the test for free um, with the hopes that everybody will give it their best shot on this one day, and really, maybe that's the only time they have to take it um, for using the scores for college purposes. Even though it's an exhausting day, juniors know it's a must if they want to go to college. I think it's a little long. I don't like taking it, but I know you have to, so. Many students agree with the fact that this ACT will be the best testing environment. Um, I think it will feel more like a test at school, just because like it's not as like a bunch of random people. It's like your peers. Um, you know, I think it gives students the opportunity you're with all of your own classmates um, and you're in your own school. It's just kind of a normal day. It's just another kind of part of you're getting up and going to your daily routine, and then, oh, su surprise, you're taking a test instead today. In their classes, teachers have been preparing students for the big day. Well, in my Lane class recently, we've been practicing some grammar stuff, and just in general, the ACT is typically supposed to be testing things that you've learned throughout your education from K-12, so. Leah Mitchell takes us over to Hickman High School with a story about a senior who is an aspiring artist. In high school senior Jack Kersey is trying to pave his way into the art industry. Jack entered several contests in which he has won. I enter all the contests I can. Um, I usually have 
good luck with just coming up with my own um, ideas and I've had good luck in the past with like the Columbia. To broaden his horizon, he is also trying to collab with up and coming musical artists such as his best friend Tate. My buddy Tate, he's like, he wants me to design him an album cover and like that's cool, a little collaboration of different creative abilities. They share creative ideas with each other. Sometimes uh, when Jack's in the middle of working on some of his arts, he'll send me a little text message, you know, a little boop, boop, boop. I'm gonna go whoosh, through, the, through the sphere and through the wires of the world. And to my cellular device, I click on the image, I'll gander at the image, and then, <laughs> and then, you know, if I'm working on some music or something, Kinda, it kind of pushes me along to know that someone else I know is doing something equally as cool and artistic. Jack will be at Missouri State next fall to continue his passion for art. This has been Liam Mitchell, CPS 360. Over at the Career Center, Cole McGee brings us a story on the engineering class. <laughs> Have you ever been driving across the bridge and wondered where the building or the bridge started? The Columbia Area Career Center has just the answer. The civil engineering class is currently constructing scaled down models that they hope one day can be built into a bridge that you see every day. This project is fun, but there's also a huge learning experience. About, uh, learning about different types of bridges and uh, the way people use them and building them ourselves and trying them out for ourselves. There's a lot more that goes into building these than you would think. The students first design them on a computer, then draw them on paper, then finally build them. Well, with bridges, we have to learn about a lot of different forces that uh, happens to the bridge and be able to uh, counteract all of them. These students use a wide variety of tools while making these bridges. Knives, push pins, screwdrivers, and of course, glue. All the students are really enjoying the time while making these bridges. The hands-on learning is a huge part of this class's learning style. That is also their favorite part. Uh, the point is we're able to use a lot more hands-on experiences and learn for ourselves. That it's hands-on. That's all we have for you today. I'm Marco. And I'm Julia. Thanks for watching CPS 360 and stay tuned for CPS 360 Sports. Hi, I'm Asia Tilford and welcome to CPS 360 Sports. First on the list, we have Zach Birup bringing you highlights from Rockbridge Girls Soccer vs. Blue Spring South in Lindenburg. Rockbridge Girls Soccer today is facing off against the powerful offensive Blue Spring South. Blue Springs gets started off hot with the pressuring defense, allowing them to keep on the offensive attack. They scored quick within the first 15 minutes of the game. Then it seemed to go all downhill for the Blue Bruins as their defense started to play. The unstoppable offense of Blue Springs South in this game, along with the lockdown defense, allowed for them to lead 2-0 at the half. As, long, as the story stayed the same in the second half, the Blue Springs South get the victory at Rockridge with the blowout 4-0.
Another game at Rockbridge High School today against the Rockbridge girls soccer team in Lindenburg. Lacking offense, this game came down to the last minute. Remaining scoreless for most of the game, it proved both teams were defensively sound. Lindenburg, working hard until the last minute with no defensive lapses, pulls out it pulls it out, scoring the final and only goal of the game, allowing for Lindenburg to pull out the hard-fought 1-0 win at Rockbridge. Next up, we have PJ Gein bringing you Hickman Girls Soccer vs. Lindenburg and Hickman Boys Baseball. First, we have Hickman Girls Soccer. Taking on Lindbergh, the shorthanded Cubes look to still get a win. If you're a fan of defense, this would have been your game. With very little offense, this game still proved to be interesting. This game literally came down to the wire. I'm talking one to zero. Still, the fans were happy, and a win is a win. Hickman Boys Baseball is next on the list. Good game for the Cutes. Poor game for the Jades. It was close up until the third inning. Zach Harris crushed a deep ball into deep right. Drove into, they would put up four in the third. Hickman wouldn't let up there though. Still playing as if they were down, they ended up beating Jeff City nine to one. Boy, talk about a blowout. That's all for CPS 360 Sports. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel.